I'm Donna Bell. And I'm Darren Elizaris. And we want to welcome you to our program, This Week in the Valley. Here you'll meet some people who are making a real difference in our community and learn about events taking place right here in our own backyards. Joining us this week are AARP members, Jean Jones and Mickey Shipp, with information on how you can help those who are hungry. Coach Andy Bush with her third and fourth grade Macon Tiger football team and cheerleaders, and the Randolph County Old Settlers Reunion this weekend. As well as the Vice President of the Huntsville Community Club, Jennifer Wilson, will join us with exciting details for this weekend. We have lots to get to, but first, thank you to everyone who attended this year's Sheridan Valley Annual Membership Meeting at Salisbury this past Thursday. We had a great turnout and certainly hope you enjoyed your evening. We'll have more on the meeting next week. But it's the second week of September, and according to some experts, now is the best time to spruce up your yard. So we have a few tips to dress up your landscape and lay the groundwork for our beautiful flower beds come spring. Perennials planted in early fall have time to take root before the first frost hits. And there are plenty of cool, hardy annuals that can be put in flower beds to create a striking autumn show. Clean up flower beds. Spent annuals like marigolds and geraniums should be pulled from their beds while most perennials that have finished blooming should be cut back to the ground. This gives the landscape a neater appearance and saves you trouble of pruning in the spring and allows the plants to focus their energy on root growth. Put in spring bulbs. Crocuses, daffodils, tulips, and others must be planted in the fall because they need winter's chill to trigger their growth. Many bulbs come in early, middle, and late blooming varieties. So rather than buying a 60 of one kind, buy 20 of each and you'll get six weeks of flowers instead of just two. What a great idea. Bulbs must be planted at a specific depth. After digging a hole, fill the bottom with a mixture of soil and a small amount of fertilizer. Too much can burn the roots. Then set the bulbs in place. Cover them with some more soil and plant over with fall annuals. In the spring, photograph the bulbs in bloom so you'll know what color bulbs to add when you want to place them um, for sprucing up your garden next fall. A little attention to your landscape in the fall can make it look great the rest of the year. That is right. We need to work on that, don't yeah, we? we? Do. I very much need to. <laughs> <laughs> the Long Branch Area AARP Chapter 5450 in Macon says it's time to pay attention to the local food pantry so they'll not run out of needed items. Our first guests, Jean Jones and Mickey Ship, have information about their food drive taking place right now that will make a difference for those in need. To serve, not to be served. That is the motto of the AARP, and I'm pleased to have Mickey and Jean with us. And they have some information about a food drive going on right now. And uh, But first, we're going to start with Jean and talk a little bit about the AARP. So, Jean, tell us a little bit about the, the organization here in, um, in Macon, and it's a national organization, but what you've got going on here. Well, we all know a lot about AARP as a national organization because they do everything from selling insurance to sponsoring a car in NASCAR and a few other things. But locally, we've had a chapter for about three years. Uh, we got this started after there was some interest expressed by some of our local folks. We have had a couple in the area who've been working with Tax Aid, which is an AARP community program for a number of years, and so they were instrumental in helping get that chapter started. But our Long Branch area chapter takes on issues in the community, and our project right now is the National Day of Service, which is on 9-11 to commemorate the tragedy that occurred on that day. And rather than have some sort of memorial service, we've chosen to do a project for the community and in our area, we're doing a food drive to support the local emergency food pantry. And that is a great project because a lot of people don't think of hunger in this area, but there are a lot of people in need of, of food. And let's turn it over to Mickey. Mickey, why don't you tell us a little bit about this food drive? Okay, as Jean mentioned earlier, 9-11 uh, commemorates the anniversary of the tragedy that hit this country and the National AARP office has a priority for that day for their local chapters, which is hunger. And so our approach to combating hunger in the local community is to raise items for the local emergency food pantry. And we've got several drop-off sites that people can drop canned goods and other non-perishables at, and we will be picking them up then on September the 11th and counting them 
and delivering to the local emergency food pantry. Uh, for example, some sites that you may drop off items include the Lock Haven, Samaritan Hospital, the Literacy Center, 54 Diner, Extension Office, the YMCA, H&R uh, Block, Dollar General, 8BC Printers, Muffler Man, Making Nails, and the License Bureau, and CBTV, of course. Mm -hmm. And there may be more there that we haven't even mentioned. Uh, some items that uh, are really needed by the food pantry include things like uh, your cereals, peanut butter, your fruits and juice, uh, children's items such as diapers and wipes, mixes such as cake and cornbread, uh, packaged items like dried beans, nuts and seeds. Paper products is a very heavily needed item. Uh, that a lot of people don't think about, things like paper towels and toilet paper, and even pet items like cat and dog food are often needed. But that kind of in a nutshell is some items that are needed by the pantry. We just feel this is an excellent chance to give back to the community, and we hear it from the food pantry themselves, the economy seems to be better, but the needs of the food pantry keep increasing. So we hope this can make a small dent in the hunger issue. Yeah, and if everybody drops in one or two items, it all adds up. That's right. And the, the locations that you've mentioned, they're, you know, they're highly frequented, so it's, right. they're, it's, an, easy, it's an easy way to help. Mm -hmm. So, and it's a great or, um, project for AARP, but this is not your first year doing this. You had much success last year. Uh, this is our fourth year for right. a food drive. The chapter has done it. Now this will be the third year, and prior to that there were just a couple of people involved getting it started but before the chapter was even formed. And uh, it's just a great opportunity to get out and do something that we will never know who benefits directly from those food donations, but we collected over 800 items last year, and we've set ourselves a goal of 1,000 items this time. Oh my goodness. I think you'll make it. I, I think, think so you too. Will. I think you will. But you, you've done all, you've got all the, the word out and the information's mm -hmm. out there. And um, if you see a box, it's got one of these little signs on it. Just, you know, make your donation. Drop, drop something in it. And it's not just food items. They need all kinds, mm -hmm. all kinds of items. So, non-perishable items. Right. So, well, that's, that's very good. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add before we go? I'd just like to say this is a one type of charity that you see the immediate benefit to the community. It, you know, very low overhead goes right back to the immediate needs of people in Macon County. And we really appreciate the efforts of people like CVTV and other media that support us in this because for us to get the word out so that we can get these items donated and collected uh, we couldn't do it without that help. And that's, that's off to ABC printers. They right, printed your flip right. wire and that helps. And tremendously. we have found that with our small chapter, we have to emphasize partnering because we're not big enough to do big projects by ourselves. We have to find other groups and individuals in the community that are willing to step up and give us a hand when it's something worthwhile for all of us. And this is definitely a project worthwhile. So, well, Jean and Mickey, thank you so much. We appreciate you both being here today and appreciate your time and, and your efforts and best of luck in your, in your food drive. Okay. Thank you. It's thank going you. to be a busy week. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. For so many families, a monthly visit to the food pantry is part of the routine they need to survive. This is a great way to help our neighbors in need. The food will be collected this Thursday, September 11th, so make sure you make your donation before then. Football season is in full force. NFL, college, high school, and middle school teams are well into their seasons. More than likely, those football players started playing what some might say is the best sport in the world at a very young age. Yes, and our next guests are at that stage. Coach Andy Bush, along with several others, join us next to talk about the third and fourth grade Macon Tiger football season. Hi, I'm Andy Bush, and I am the Macon Youth Football Parent Liaison and Marketing 
coordinator for the program. And I am here today with Ted Harrell. He is one of the head coaches for our third and fourth grade um, Tigers football team. We have 48 kids this year in both grades, and we have six games coming up over the next month and a half. And he's here to tell us a little bit about the coaching basics on that. So, Ted, what do you do enjoy? What do you enjoy most about coaching kids this age? Oh, it's just a challenge um, teaching them the fundamentals and the basics. Just seeing when that light bulb turns on, it kind of makes you feel good as a coach, and you know, just letting them enjoy the game. That's about it. So, working with this age group, what do you find to be the most challenging? the age, um, keeping their the attention span and just keeping them keeping them moving forward and, and learning what we're trying to teach them. I know last year we noticed a huge difference between the age, age third grade and age fourth grade. Do you think that's another difference this year? Yeah, the fourth grade they are a lot more mature and the fourth grade we have this year, they played last year. So they're, they're a lot more used to the program we're trying to do where the third grade they're starting off new but they're picking up on it pretty quick and they're doing a good job. So what motivates you to come out and coach this age group because it's not everybody that would want to do this Ted. Well unfortunately uh, a couple years ago my two boys made me promise them they could play football and there's not a program in making so we had to pretty much build one and and we just I've got several boys coming and we're going to be here for several years. All right. Well, thanks, Ted. I know they're getting ready to start practice around the corner, so I better let you go. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Ted. We're here with Michael Lanier, and he is one of our fourth grade football players this year. How are you today? Good. Good. You excited about practice? Yeah. Awesome. Well, tell me, is this your first year playing football? No, I played last year with um, the third graders of Macon. All right. Did you have a good season last season? Yeah. Awesome. What are you learning from your coaches this year? Um, to stay in shape, uh, be a smart runner, um, uh, be have fun. Are they telling you to drink water in this hot weather? Yeah. Drink lots of water? Yeah. All right. What's practice like for you? Fun. So what do you do in practice? Um, we, we do an Oklahoma drill. Um, just do a lot of things that I don't know what they're called. Maybe do you run some plays? Yeah, we run some plays. Do some practice? Yeah. Do you know if you're going to be offense or defense yet? Yeah. Pro what are you going to be? Both. Both. All right. Well, how excited are you about playing this season? Very, very excited. You guys think you're going to be successful this season, have some wins? Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming by and talking to us this afternoon. Okay, thanks. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, your cheerleaders this year? How many do you have? I have a total of 25 altogether. I have a nine, or I'm sorry, 17 fourth graders and eight third graders. That's a lot of cheerleaders. Yes. Yeah, almost as many as we have football players. Right. Yeah. So, how many years has have you been coaching cheerleading? That's just the second year since we started the third and fourth football. And uh, why are you coaching cheerleading, Tegan? Because <laughs> of my daughter. She kind of came to me afterwards and I wanted to know if I could start it up and get them going, so I did. And I take it these girls back here have a lot of fun whenever they get together and practice and go to the games? Yes, of course they do. They're constantly screaming and yelling, and uh, it's a great time. Good. Well, I, I think they have a cheer that they want to show us. Yeah, we can do a little stunt. That so. would be great. Okay. All we'll right.
we're going to talk to a couple of the cheerleaders. How about you? What's your name? Morgan. What grade are you in? Fourth. Now tell me, why did you want to be a cheerleader this year? I love doing stunting. All right, very good, very good. Were you a cheerleader last year? Yes. And what about you? What's your name? Kinsley Brower. Kinsley, and are you a cheer? Were you a cheerleader last year? Yes. And what's your favorite thing about cheerleading? That we get to do stunting, and that's mostly all. Okay. All right. What's your name? Lauren. And what grade are you in, Lauren? Fourth. And were you a cheerleader last year? Yes. What's your favorite part of cheerleading? Probably the stunts and dance. And what's your name? Kim Rion. And were you a cheerleader last year? Yes. And what's your favorite cheer? Um, LTSEO. Okay, all right. And one last question. What's your name? Ava. And were you a cheerleader last year? Yes. And what's your favorite cheer? Um, let's see here, L-O-T-S-G-O. Okay, how about this? We are going to do, how about, let's do a great big go Tigers, okay? And you ready? One, two, three. Go Tigers! We hope you've enjoyed a little bit of time with us today with the uh, Making Youth Football third and fourth graders. We just want to wish the teams good luck this season. We have a six-game season. We have three home games this year, so we want to invite everyone to come out and watch the games. The games are September the 13th, September the 27th, and October the 11th. They're all at Hugh Dunn Field. The third graders play at 10 o'clock, and the fourth graders play at noon, and everybody is welcome to come out and enjoy the games. Uh, the games will also be televised later on on CVTV, so everybody should watch CVTV. And we also want to take just a second to thank all of the businesses that are here in town that have sponsored us. We had great sponsors last year for our first season, and we also have some great sponsors this year who've really come through to help us with purchasing equipment that we needed to keep the, keep the teams going this year. So we just want to thank everybody in the community and hope you come out and support us and watch some games. Go Tigers! Thanks everyone, we look forward to airing a few of your games on CVT.